Thank you for joining us today. Counting is now complete for the 2018 referendum on electoral reform. And moments ago, the results of the referendum were reported by my office to the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly. 1,403,358 completed voting packages were returned to Elections BC by the deadline of 4.30 p.m. on Friday, December 7, <coughs> representing returns from 42.6% of registered voters. In question one, voters were asked which system should British Columbia use for provincial elections, the current first-past-the-post voting system or a proportional representation system. Of the validly, va validly cast votes, 61.3% supported first past the post, and 38.7% supported proportional representation. The second question asked voters to rank three proportional systems, dual member proportional, DMP, mixed member proportional, MMP, and rural urban proportional, RUP. MMP was the proportional system with the most support after the first round of counting in question two. It received 41.24% of the valid first preferences, followed by DMP with 29.45% and RUP with 29.31%. Per the Electoral Reform Re Referendum 2018 regulation, a second round of counting was required for question two because no system received a majority of first preferences after the first round of counting. RUP had the fewest first preferences, so it was eliminated and its votes were transferred to their second preferences. After the second round of counting, MMP had the most support with 63.05% of valid votes, followed by DMP with 36.95%. Results by electoral district will be available on our website shortly. That concludes my announcement. I'm now happy to take any questions that you may have in relation to the administration of the referendum. Thank you. Yes. How many uh, packages arrived after the deadline? Do you have a count of that? I have an approximate count of the number that we've received. It's around 6,000 packages that have come back after the deadline. Uh, that is uh, less than the number of packages that came back after the HST referendum, so very much uh, in line with what is typically seen in a vote-by-mail event. And what was your count of spoils, and what was the main reason for spoils? So there were, let me get my exact numbers for you, in terms of the results, there were 2,461 rejected ballots. So the rejected ballots are ballots that had no valid response for either question one or question two. As you know, voters could then answer either question one or question two, and on question two they could rank one, two, or three preferences. So the number of invalid votes for each question then varied. So for question one, uh, there were 1.378753 valid votes. There were 10,209 invalid votes, and then, of course, the 2,461 rejected ballots. For question number two, uh, after the first round of counting, uh, there were 831,760 continuing ballots or valid votes. Uh, there were 557,202 invalid votes, so those were people who marked the first question but did not mark the second question. And then again, there were 2,461 rejected ballots. Did it win anywhere in BC? Sorry? Did, did, did DR uh, win the vote in any of the uh, 87 writings? Yeah, I don't have that information with me right now, but that'll be published on our website. Thank you. Any other questions? How do you feel that it's all finished and over with now? Yeah, you know, it's uh, been an intense time period for our office. Um, overall, if I look back on the administration of the event, I'm you know, very pleased with the efforts of Elections BC. Uh, we met the requirements of the referendum and delivered on our mandate in accordance to what we were asked to do. Uh, many of the systems um, that were in place for the referendum were similar to what we had done in previous vote-by-mail events. 
uh, but there were many other things uh, that were very different. As an example, we used high-speed tabulators to uh, count the results of the ballot. First time that that's been done in British Columbia. Um, if I think back to now, we're less than two weeks following the close of voting, and we're able to report the results. If you look back at the HST referendum, it was over four weeks after the close of voting. Look back even to the uh, 2002 treaty negotiations referendum, where again there was a multiple question ballot. It was over seven weeks to report the results. So I'm uh, very pleased with some of the innovations that we've done. We're going to do a thorough assessment of everything, of all the processes, how it worked, do some lessons learned in the new year, and uh, then we'll release a full report sometime in spring 2019. Do you feel at all this has been historic? That's a good question. I'm, there's been a number of uh, referenda on electoral reform. Um, as I've mentioned, we did do a couple of, of innovations that we piloted. Uh, the use of tabulators uh, in particular was one that we very much wanted to use. Uh, the use of tabulators uh, in future provincial elections has also been a recommendation uh, of Elections BC. Yes? In, in general elections, when you put out your final report, you usually have a demographic breakdown as well of how turnout went compared to different age groups and so forth. Will you know that this time when you have that kind of data when you're done? Uh, certainly from the, the information that we receive from the certification envelopes, uh, we know which voters participated, so we will be able to provide some demographic breaks down of, uh, of results in our report. Thank you. Yes. Okay, well, seeing as there's no further questions, uh, thank you very much for your attendance and your attention. Oh, we have questions on the phone. We may have questions on the phone. Sure. Does anybody have any questions on the phone? Is there a cue, or can I just ask a question? Go ahead. Um, we wanted what to know... <laughs> We wanted to know just uh, from, from beginning to end how much this cost Elections BC to run. So it's too early to tell you what the final um, cost of the election will be. That will be contained in the report that we uh, release in the spring of uh, 2019. Um, obviously, there's still bills that have to be paid and there's costs coming in. Our overall budget was $14.561 million for this event. Uh, I anticipate that we will come in under that budget uh, but it's too early to determine what the final cost will be for the referendum. Thanks. You're welcome. A question here from David at the start. Sure. Um, I just wanted to know, uh, during the final interim counts uh, along the way, it seemed like some ridings were far below others, especially Surrey, Richmond, Burnaby, and the North. I'm wondering if there's any reflection on the location of polling stations, outreach in those neighborhoods, uh, the ballot, and any, anything initially that you could explain why the turnout was so low there? So this was uh, conducted by vote by mail. So all voters, registered voters in the province, received a, a vote by mail package that was sent directly to their, uh, to their mailing address. Um, so certainly the location, there were no uh, in-person polling stations, so that uh, couldn't have been a factor. Um, there was, uh, we did stagger the mail out of voting packages to make sure that... Uh, we could respond to any inquiries that came in. It was staggered over a two-week time period. So, of course, the early returns were likely from those regions of the province that received their packages early. Um, but I don't have uh, any, uh, any uh, understanding uh, at a more deeper level than that as to why some voters decided to participate and other voters didn't. Can I get a question? here? Yes. Your people testified to the Finance Committee about virtual 98% compliance with polls. Um, no evidence of fraud, I think, in the in the early going. But is, is, was this a clean vote, or do you have any concerns? Did any this going forward? Uh, Leslie, you were quite uh, broken up. I'm not sure that I understood your full question. Um, maybe you could repeat it. Sure. Was there any evidence of voter fraud? Anything to worry about? No, there was no evidence of voter fraud at all in the referendum. Uh, there's very little evidence of voter fraud in British Columbia, in provincial elections, or in mail-based referenda. Uh, that said, it's something that we do take very seriously, and we're very vigilant about. 
and we'll follow up on any complaints that we receive in this area. And we did have a number of systems in place during the referendum to ensure the in integrity of the process and to detect instances of, of multiple requests uh, for voting packages by the same voter. Right. Sorry? Was the postal strike confusing to people? Um, certainly we heard from voters that they were concerned about their ability to mail their package back uh, given the ongoing rotating strikes and that was uh, one of the driving reasons behind our decision to extend the close of voting by one full week from November 30th to December 7th. Yeah. Well, I have another question here from David at the star. Um, in terms of uh, some analysts have looked at the returns and said that the re lateness of receiving ballots in some lower mainland writing uh, and the need to get them in earlier into the mail to arrive on time would have had a fairly significant uh, impact on those. They found a 0 0.3 correlation of some sort. Um, is there is, any questions about that that you thought of uh, that could have impacted the turnout? Um, you know, we haven't done any similar analysis like that. Um, the pattern that we used to mail out voting packages uh, was consistent with previous vote by mail events and, and considered sending the packages to those regions furthest away from uh, the main mail processing plants first so that they would have an equitable amount of time to return their ballots with those locations uh, that were closer to the, uh, to the mail depots. Um, but certainly we're going to uh, do a very comprehensive review of the event and uh, learn any lessons that we can for a future vote by mail. Thank you. You're welcome. I am uh, calling from Creston, BC. I've got a question for you. Yes. Uh, do you know if uh, city centers or areas that would have, you know, had basically city centers, Victoria, uh, Lower Mainland, uh, voted more for proportional representation than, let's say, more rural areas like Creston or that area? Or was it all tabulated together? So we do have results available by electoral district. Those results will be available on our website. I don't have that data in front of me right now. Um, but, but looking on our website, you should be able to find uh, information uh, on turnout uh, and uh, the range of, of voting options uh, in each district. Okay, and that should be available relatively soon? Yeah. It's on right now. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, well, I think that uh, concludes questions from the phone. Uh, again, thanks everyone for your attendance uh, here at the uh, conference to announce the results of the referendum. Thank you.